Even though Bruce Lee passed away almost 45 years ago, his legacy remains alive today. Although Bruce Lee is known for his practices in mixed martial arts, he was much more than that. Bruce Lee was an actor, father, philosopher, screenwriter, producer, and director. He is credited for changing the way Asians were represented in American films. Most consider this legend to be the most influential martial artist in history, as well as a pop culture icon of the 20th century. He certainly influenced martial arts films across the world, as well as martial arts in itself. He studied and taught his own style to students around the world. Even today, his style of martial arts is still being studied and used. Between the media and his daughter Shannon Lee, it has been possible to carry on the philosophies of Bruce Lee. Now that we have introduced the basics of Bruce Lee, in today's top trending video we are sharing 10 things you didn't know about Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee came from a very wealthy family that lived in Hong Kong, China. His father, Li Hui Chuen, was a notorious Cantonese opera singer and film actor. During the prime of his career, he was signed to several movies, working in almost five to six films at once. He toured across the United States and performed for different Chinese communities. It was during his tour in America that the young dragon would be born. Li Hui Chuen's success and fame led him to introduce Bruce Lee to stardom at the young age of three months. Because of his father, Bruce Lee appeared in 20 films by the time he was 18. Bruce Lee's mother, Grace Ho, came from one of the wealthiest and most powerful clans in Hong Kong, the Ho Tungs. Her father was a prominent businessman and philanthropist who succeeded Ho Fook as head compradora at Jardines. Also, Grace Ho was a niece to Robert Ho Tung, who was known as the Grand Old Man of Hong Kong. He was knighted in 1915 and 1955. Bruce Lee was born in San Francisco, California. After his birth, his family went back to Hong Kong to raise him. Soon after returning, the Japanese occupied Hong Kong, and Lee Hoi Chuen put his career on hold for three years and eight months. After the Japanese left, Lee Hoi Chuen resumed his career in acting, in which he became even more successful during the rebuild of Hong Kong. Most people know that Bruce Lee excelled in martial arts, but many do not know how it all started. After our last fact you didn't know about Bruce Lee, it's obvious he grew up privileged compared to other kids in Hong Kong. Despite the wealth, the neighborhood Bruce Lee grew up in became overcrowded and overrun by gang activity. After the Japanese left, there was an influx in refugees fleeing from communist China, and Hong Kong at the time was a British crown colony. Bruce Lee went to an English-speaking secondary school where the other kids were influenced by the gang activity. By the time Bruce Lee was 13, his parents grew worried about his constant fighting with others. So Li Hui Chuen decided to begin training the young Bruce Lee in martial arts. Li Hui Chuen taught his son the fundamentals of Wu-style Tai Chi Chuan. Soon after learning the basics, Bruce Lee began training in Wing Chun. His teacher Yip Man tried to keep his students from fighting in the streets by encouraging them to fight in organized competitions. Once other students began to learn Bruce Lee had German mixed in his ancestry, many of them refused to train with Bruce Lee, considering it teaching martial arts to non-Asians. The judgment of his peers did not stop Bruce, as he continued to train privately with Yip Man. Despite attempts from his family to persuade Bruce Lee to no longer fight in the streets, the young martial arts master continued on. It was reported that he beat the son of a feared triad family. After reaching no result and now in fear for his life, Bruce Lee's parents relocated Bruce Lee to the United States of America. The muscle strength, endurance, and maintaining a flow while in a fight is important. But where else can these physical attributes cause you to stand out? Despite the physical evidence of how similar ballet or dance is to martial arts, many people have a hard time believing that our beloved Bruce Lee was also a dancer. Before Bruce Lee moved out of the United States, he participated in a competition called the Cha-Cha Championship in Hong Kong. It's very similar to the Western Dancing with the Stars show. In 1958, Bruce Lee entered the competition and graciously took the win alongside actress Zhang Zhongwen. Since the main thing people relate to Bruce Lee is martial arts, this little-known fact has shocked those who have interest in Bruce. But that's not all. Bruce Lee at the time was attending St. Francis Xavier's College, where he was mentored by the coach of the school's boxing team. In 1958, Bruce won his school's boxing tournament, knocking out the guy who was previously the champion in the final round. It's hard to imagine someone whose kicks were too fast to film was able to participate in a tournament where kicks aren't allowed. Perhaps if Bruce Lee lived a longer life, we would have seen a match between him and Muhammad Ali. After a few years of living in the United States, Bruce Lee began operating his own martial arts studios. In order to promote his new businesses, Bruce Lee would put on demonstrations. One common demonstration was the one-inch punch. Since mastering his body and physical technique, Lee was able to place his fist one inch away from a volunteer's chest. Without retracting his arm, Bruce Lee would punch the volunteer so hard that they would fall backwards. The punch was designed to improve punching power and technique. It's used to generate tremendous amounts of impact force during close quarters combat. The punch is commonly misunderstood that it requires a snap of the 
the wrist. The one-inch punch became popular in the West after Bruce Lee demonstrated it at the Long Beach International Karate Championship. These demonstrations not only assisted in bringing more martial arts enthusiasts to Bruce Lee, but also paved the way for Lee to meet his wife Linda Lee and fight opponent Wong Jack Man in the future. The punch was also used in several movies such as Kill Bill Vol. 2, where the protagonist uses her newly found technique to break through a coffin. And in Ip Man 3, the punch was also used when Donnie Yen goes up against his final opponent. Maintaining that level of skill in mixed martial arts requires a strict schedule for training. Lee liked to include several elements of fitness – muscular strength, muscular endurance, cardiovascular endurance, and flexibility. Lee also used bodybuilding techniques to build muscle mass, but would only build so much, as the extra muscle would slow down his speed and hinder his flexibility. Bruce Lee maintained this strict regimen on a daily basis. In his older days, he was known to have people come to his house and train with him throughout the day. In an Ask Me Anything post on Reddit from his daughter Shannon Lee, she told us how her father would train while watching television. It was also mentioned as children, Shannon and her brother Brandon Lee had a hard time inviting friends over because they were nervous of the grown men fighting in the backyard. Bruce Lee's widow, Linda Lee Caldwell, had mentioned in several interviews and biographies that after Lee moved to the United States, he was very keen on eating healthy and took his nutrition very seriously. He drank high-protein drinks and became strict with his vitamins and mineral supplements. Bruce Lee remained a fan of Asian cuisine in the United States and often ate meals that consisted of vegetables, rice, and fish. Bruce Lee would compare his body to an automobile. If you gave yourself the wrong fuel like a diet of junk food, your body won't run properly, just as if you were giving your automobile the wrong fuel. He also avoided baked goods and refined flour, describing them as empty calories that did nothing for his body. Despite the strict diet regimen, Shannon Lee told Reddit users that her dad was actually a bad cook. It's almost humorous to think of Bruce Lee being helpless against a stove. It was no secret that Bruce Lee had a temper. During one of his one-inch punch demonstrations, Bruce Lee became noticeably frustrated after his first punch failed to knock down the volunteer. In anger, Lee attempted the punch again, knocking back the volunteer who later complained he was not prepared to be hit again by Lee. The crowd wasn't as pleased as Bruce Lee thought they should be, so his anger turned to fury, calling out everyone in the crowd to dare challenge him. Many people were taken aback by his disrespectful attitude, and one man in particular decided to step up to the challenge. Bruce Lee received several invites from Wong Jack Man, another martial arts teacher in the area, challenging him to a fight before Lee finally accepted. As almost all witnesses are deceased currently, it was difficult for reporters to collect the full story of what really happened that day. From the witness statements, Bruce Lee and Wong Jack Man had an incredible fight that lasted almost 30 minutes. Lee later told Black Belt Magazine that the fight with fellow Wing Chun-trained Wong Jack Man changed his entire thinking on martial arts. Lee began to adapt the style to his own Jeet Kune Do. Lee told his wife that he should have beaten Wong Jack Man much sooner than he did, and that he had an all-new purpose in training even harder than he did before. Many sought to learn how to fight and prepare their body to fight by Bruce Lee. His legacy, Jeet Kune Do, has been passed by only three people Lee had certified himself. These three instructors, Tami Kimura, James Yim Lee, and Dan Inosanto, were told by Lee himself to dismantle the schools he started in the United States prior to his death. He told them to continue to teach the art but to keep the numbers low and quality high. James Yim Lee passed away in 1972 and was unable to certify any others in the art. Taki Kimura has only certified one person in Jun Fan Gung Fu, and that would be his son Andy Kimura. Dan Inosanto continued to teach and certify select students for 30 years. Inosanto alone made it possible for thousands of people who are practicing martial arts to trace their training lineage back to Bruce Lee. However, Bruce Lee also instructed several world karate champions, such as Chuck Norris, Joe Lewis, and Mike Stone. Between the three of them, during their training with Lee, they won every karate championship in the United States. Many know Bruce Lee as an intimidating opponent for others studying martial arts, but not so many know about his immediate family life. In order to pay for his college, Bruce Lee taught martial arts in a studio. He would go to high schools in order to recruit young kids interested in learning martial arts. Little did he know that at one of the high schools he would demonstrate his skills in front of his future wife Linda. At the time, her maiden name was Emery, and she signed up to one of his classes after being persuaded by her Asian classmate. After three years, their relationship developed and they got married. Bruce and Linda Lee had two children together named Brandon and Shannon Lee. After Bruce Lee passed away, his family did their best to keep his legacy alive. Due to an on-set accident while filming The Crow, Brandon Lee was shot and passed away 19 years after his father. Since Lee has passed, Linda has remarried twice and carries on his legacy alongside their daughter Shannon Lee.
Linda Lee Cadwell and her daughter carry on Bruce Lee's name with their Bruce Lee Foundation. They carry Lee's philosophical message and started a scholarship program for children from low-income families to receive martial arts education. At the same time, Bruce Lee's siblings, Phoebe and Robert Lee, have pursued projects devoted to Bruce Lee separately. Distance is one factor, as Shannon Lee and Linda Lee Cadwell are in California, as the other half carries their traditional Chinese ways in Hong Kong. The family feud boils down to the lucrative rights to Bruce's name, image, and work. Shannon Lee and her mother have threatened Bruce Lee's siblings several times over copyright issues. This includes the movie Bruce Lee, My Brother that was co-produced by Robert Lee. During interviews, Robert Lee admitted on multiple occasions that he and his sister have attempted to reach out to Shannon directly, who continues to use lawyers as a form of communication. It was reported that Shannon went directly to the government of where her father originated from and demanded full trademark rights for free. Robert and Phoebe Lee continued to spread his legacy despite the legal threats. Robert Lee, who is now 69 and semi-retired, claims that Shannon Lee believes they are only using Bruce's name to earn money. Robert Lee lived his own life and career as the founder of a popular Hong Kong beat band called the Thunderbirds, and has no need for money but wants to continue sharing the life Bruce Lee had before moving to the United States of America. Since Bruce Lee died unexpectedly during the filming of The Game of Death, director Robert Klaus was enlisted to finish the film using two stand-ins. The finished and released version used original footage with an entirely new plot. The stand-in gets a gruesome scene where a bullet passes through his face. The bullet left him alive but in need of plastic surgery. The character Billy uses this to his advantage to fake his own death before seeking out revenge against those who wronged him. During this time, real footage of Bruce Lee's corpse in his open-topped casket was shown. At several points during the movie, they used original footage that included Bruce Lee before his passing. The different footage was noticeable to those who watched it due to the quality difference of the footage. Several actors that were associated with previous Bruce Lee movies were included in the reshoot for the film. Many were pleased with Robert Klaus's work on The Game of Death, as it was the last movie to release that Bruce Lee had worked on.